Welcome back everyone to 3 a.m. cards. It's a few days post Christmas, just a few days away from New Year's. I know I said I was taking a break for the holiday season, but I need to do a uh, box opening to kind of uh, get used to being on camera again. So today I'm going to talk about some of the things I got for Christmas. I'll show those off real quick. We're going to talk about what's coming up next. And today's box opening is going to be another Brothers War set box because I need a tune-up fight. I need a, a tune-up opening to get back into the swing of things. So to show you what's coming up for the future box openings over the next few weeks, next month, we're going to do that Uninfinity box. I don't know what to expect from this. I know it's really silly and wacky. Uh, we'll see where that goes. Um... The Brothers War collector boxes, I don't know what we're doing with these right now. These were just not very fun to open, just were not hot, didn't, just didn't enjoy these. So these are a maybe, we'll see what happens with that. And then as I did that poll a few weeks ago about what box you wanted me to open next, and one of them was another mystery convention edition box. So that will be on the list. And then one that I think is really going to be fun is going to be a Jumpstart Booster Box Battle. We're going to do Jumpstart 2022 versus Jumpstart 2020. And we're not trying to shame either set or say which one's better. We're just going to go ahead and uh, open them both up and compare our wares. Compare what pulls we get from each box. So what I got for Christmas. Um, you're looking at one of the things right here. The Kaya Folio Signed Millstone Mat. So this was really neat. I was really happy when my friend got this for me. And I also have, I'm lucky enough to have an Antiquities edition of the Millstone, horribly off-centered. And uh, this is actually where the term Mill came from. As you can see there, it says two mana, take the top two cards from uh, Target Player's Library and put them into their graveyard. And you might be wondering, don't newer versions of this card have a tap symbol there or it just says two colorless? Can you activate over and over again? That looks weird. And yes, it does because this was printed in 1993, yeah. So, or maybe 94, 93 or 94, I forget the exact time the Antiquities came out. I'm sure someone will correct me in the comments. But as you can see there, it says Mono Artifact. So that meant you can only activate it once per turn. So, Playmat is really neat. Was happy about that. A friend of mine printed me this, I guess because they know I love Counter Magic so much. So, that was really neat. Thank you very much for that. And then a friend of mine went to John Con in Philly. And we play old school magic, so yes, these are proxies, everyone relax. They are from John Con, so that's what the back of them look like. But uh, playing old school magic, like I said, we use these proxies all the time, so they're spread out through a lot of decks. It was really cool to get some alternate art ones. So this is the Power 9 here, the infamous Power 9. So first we got the Time Walk there, two mana sorcery, take an extra turn. You know, you can see why this is called the Power 9, just... It's not so much the effect, because there's cards nowadays that do the same things, but just the mana cost is what's insane. There's the Black Lotus. Um, definitely not my favorite version of Black Lotus, but that is some cool alternate artwork right there. Ancestral Recall. One mana, draw three cards. You can make your opponent do it too. But yeah, just one mana, instant, you're drawing three cards. Then the Infamous Time Twister uh, on the Power 9. So this one is... Uh, I do believe this is the one Power 9 card that is not banned in Commander. So basically, you, uh, you start a new graveyard pile, then everyone shuffles their hand in their graveyard and their library and draws seven new cards. So Time Twister is really neat. I love running that. And then the, the rest are just the Moxes, obviously, zero mana. And it's not Crow Mox. It's not Mox Opal. It just comes into play and it works. So all the colors here, Jet, Sapphire, Pearl, and then Ruby cool alternate artwork on them then the last one not one of the power nine but very played in old school and i don't have like a uh, twelve hundred dollars for a copy so i have the proxy here library of alexandria this thing is just a monster right here so tap for one colorless man and no big deal but if you have seven cards in your hand you can tap to draw a card so the old trick is at the beginning of your at the beginning of your opponent's end step you draw your eighth card because you got seven in your hand, you don't have to discard because your opponent's end steps. So definitely going to be getting more old school magic in in the future. And then my girlfriend, she she really hooked, hooked it up with this. So RoboCop VHS, I do believe this is the first version of this. I didn't start collecting VHSs, but I lost a lot of these from when I was a kid. I still have a lot of my collectibles from the early 90s, but pretty much everything from the 80s that, that I had is just gone. So, And I do have a VCR. 
so I can watch this. I do have these on DVD, of course, but this was just really neat. I used to see this all the time in the video store. That's the iconic cover of the movie. Is a little damaged, but still very nice find. Th things like this are getting hard to find. Then the other one was you saw before Ghostbusters. So this is one I did have as a kid, and either my mom threw it out. It's still in a storage unit somewhere, but I couldn't find it, so she was able to replace it. And this is really neat. And they did not... Can I open this? Where does it open from? Yeah, right here. They didn't rewind it, those sons of bitches. But this was really neat. This, I do believe this was the second version of the VHS because the first one is nearly impossible to find. It's like the clamshell version, like the hard, uh, kind of like, uh, it's like a hard case, very, very famous for what the Disney movies came in. But that's what came in for Christmas. But let's stop talking about all that. Let's do Brothers War set box. Again, this is a warm-up opening. I know, I know we've done a lot of these lately. But when I'm not on camera for a while, it does take me a while to kind of warm up again. So this is going to be my tune-up fight. And we'll see what pulls we get. Let's just go. Enough talking. Where are we here? I forgot how to open these. Are these magic cards? Okay, here we go. Let's see what pulls we get. Millstone. Yeah, Millstone. That uh, old. Yeah, that version just does not hold up to the original one whatsoever. Then we got Brotherhood End for the first rare. Very nice. That card went down a lot, but Brothers War is. Because what are we now? Like six weeks official post release, so things are cooling down. Yeah, and we got uh, Lay Down the Arms. That's one of the really good uncommons in the set. We talked about that before, but some really uh, great uncommons all over this set. So if we see any, we will definitely put them to the side and take a look. Then we get the Surge Engine for the first Mythic. And then Phyrexian Scriptures, uh, original Dominaria from the list, Mythic. So we'll take a look at that, see if that's anything. I almost forgot list pulls. And that's why one of the reasons set boxes have been hot. They seem to be packed better than the collector boxes, but those list pulls, man, sometimes you really get hooked up. Soul Guide Lantern for the Retro Frame Artifact. Let me get the Dig Sight Mentor. No list pull. From what I've seen, and I should really average it out, I think you do... I want to say like six or seven list pulls per uh, set box. That could be really off, but somewhere in that range. Okay, that is just an uncommon there. What? Did, what is... Yeah, we've pulled some of those before. That is that... Yeah, that is from... What set? Okay, that's that from the Brothers War set. That really threw me off with that symbol there. I don't know what's up with that. I'll put that there later and not waste time confusing you guys. But Underground River. Very nice. Not a lot of uh, the pain lands from this set. Very, very few have been pulled. I was going to list some in the TCG store, and I think, what did we do? Four collector boxes, a draft box, three or four set. I mean, I think I got under 10 pain lands altogether, so that is that is pretty weird. Ivory Tower. Then we got Queen Kayla. Yeah, I feel like with Dominaria, we just got tons and tons of those pain lands. So these appear to be rarer, if that's a word. Transformer card. I almost forgot about the Transformers cards. And we got the Door to Nothingness. Ten mana, two of each color. Target, target player loses the game. Get the hell out of here. Then we got Kayla's Reconstruction. And then a Great Worm, a Foil Great Worm, which is a Mythic. Did I miss any other Mythics yet? I don't think so. Now we are good. Nobody can shame my piles yet, but give me time. Just give it time. Right, here we go. I think I do see a list symbol back there, but first we got Foundry, Expect Foundry Inspector, then Hercules Final Meditation, it's Organic Destiny, and then, ooh, we got uh, Gear Hulk from Kaladesh. That is a mythic right there. Five mana, four, four trample. When he enters the battlefield, distribute four one one counters among any number of target creatures you control. That was probably a monster in standard at some point. Probably like my yeah, probably mono green. 
That is cool. I did notice on Arena the other night they will do events where you can be where you're basically going to be playing the standard rotation from a certain year. I think they had uh, I think they actually had 2020 up not too long ago, which was one of my favorite rotations. Bone saw. Then we got autonomous assembler. Thought that one was a mythic, but it's not. Yeah, so uh, I think I was saying this before, then I got sidetracked, but we're like six weeks post-release, so the prices are settling in to probably where they're going to be for a while. Uh, we got Phyrexian, what is it, all with one, all will be one, whatever the hell it's called. That's coming out, so we'll see what that does to the prices of these cards. Sigil or Valor. Mistress Foundry, I, I flip and love this land right now. This is saving me on Arena so much. Destroying creatures, clearing the board, then just ending the game by attacking with these things over and over again. If you have four of them out, they can pump each other. So huge fan of the foundries. And we were talking about MTG Old School before. That's uh, that's one of the tricks in there. Everyone uses Mistress Factory, which was reprinted in MH2 if it sounds familiar. But you would just clear the board or use a control deck, and then you're just doing damage with your with your factories. Key to the city, very nice one. Wellspring, uh, Toy Maker. Do we see that one somewhere else just recently? You know what it is? I uh, was opening arena packs earlier on uh, MTG Arena, and that was the rare I got. So that's why that was still in my head right there. All right, so I'm not going to lie. Nothing great out of this box yet. Quicksilver Amulet. So I am doing a video, I don't know if it's going to be out by the time you see this, talking about the Brothers uh, War Retro Frame Artifacts, because this subset in here, I think it's so great for new players. Tons of great artifacts in here, but I can't believe this one skipped my eye earlier in our earlier openings. So four mana, then you can pay four mana and tap this, put a creature card from your hand onto the battlefield. So I love Monster Manual. Um, Monster Manual probably is the better card, but... Just think about it, you got some big stompy uh, dragon or whatever in your deck that costs 10, 12 mana and just, you know, pay four and put it out. You don't cast it, so um, you may not get some of the benefits Benefits if it's one of those cards that say when you cast this, something happens, but you should still get an enter battlefield trigger. Chromatic Star, then Painful Quandry. That one is just brutal, so five mana whenever an opponent casts a spell, they discard a card or pay five life. So it's your choice right there, kid. And then, uh, ooh, what is this? Oh, yeah, we got one of these from the list before, I do believe. So, what was this, original? This is one of the Kamigawa sets. So, this was just a really weird style of card right there. Rune Tail Kitsune Ascendant, if I said that correctly. Wow, 12 minutes in. I was talking about those Christmas presents for too long. All right, let's speed up here, guys. Speed running packs. We're getting Defense Grid. Brush Land, second Pain Land. Packs flying all over the place. Let's go. Let's get a good pull from this set. How about that? That's a good pull, just a common right there, but we want better. All right, then we got Mistress Bobble. Another great worm. Great worm. We saw that one earlier. So thus far, this is uh, not a uh, very uh, not a very good box. Not gonna lie, guys. But we got time. And I don't remember if this is from the new inventory I got or from the previous case. Because I'm afraid we opened the previous case and got all the good boxes already. But judging by some of the pulls we got. Swiftfoot Boots. Urza, Lord Protector. Finally. We finally got it. The flipping top of the card. We can go ahead and complete that puzzle now. God, what is it? Six, seven, eight, nine, ten boxes? And that's the first time we're getting that. So finally. And finally something good out of this box. All right, then we got Phyrexian Processor, Sigur, Sigur of Valor, another Destiny card, an Arcane Proxy Foil. That is very nice right there. And I do, I messed up the Mythic Pile because that is a Mythic. Yeah, we're, and some of those are Foil, so I don't know how they're going to show up on the camera here. We're running out of space here. Too many Mythics, so... Yeah, look at that. One, two, three, four, five, six. I have six Mythics so far. Oh yeah, seven right there. Forgot about Urza. He was in his own pile because I got to get him in a sleeve as soon as this is over and go ahead and complete my puzzle. 
finally. Probably should sell it off. I don't know if I'm going to run that card in the deck yet, but then we got Eyes of Gaia, then a Wellspring uh, Foil. Alright, Foil Island, that was there. That was nice right in front there. We got Black Blade Reforged. This is an interesting one. So, two mana, and then equip creature gets plus one, plus one for each land you control. And then it costs seven to equip, but only three if it goes on a legendary creature. So, I don't know if I'd run that, but that, that seems like a decent card. Maybe not, maybe not a bad choice. Then we got Loran of the Third Path. Then we got Ratchet Field Mechanic, followed by the Perilous Vault, Blast Zone. Yeah, where is our where's our uh, Pain Lands? I almost call them Shock Lands. No, very few Pain Lands. Like I said, that's that's been a surprise. Well, we kind of saw that because I remember uh, Midnight Hunt. We got tons of that dual lands, rare dual land cycle. Then uh, Innistrad was a lot more. Uh, there's one of the good commons right there, or uncommons right there, the Haywire Might. People are having fun with that thing, if you want to investigate that. Sword of the Meek. Then we get, oh, over the top. I, I saw this and we made the silly Sylvester Stallone reference, but each player reveals a number of cards on the top of their library equal to the number of non-land permanents they control. And then they're going to put all those permanents they've revealed onto the battlefield and the rest into their graveyard. This... Someone was casting this in arena the other night. It, it was the most insane thing I ever saw. Like, I don't. I almost won because he was doing it. But th this card is just does insane stuff. It's it's nuts. Huge fan of that. Let me get the smokestack from uh, Urza's leg. Urza's saga. Urza's legacy. Uh, one of those. So what does this one do during your upkeep? You may put a scoot a suit counter. Ooh, a suit counter on smokestack. During each player's upkeep, that uh, that player sacrifices a permanent for each counter, each suit counter on Smokestack. So very, very interesting. Let's, hopefully, we got a better box here, guys. I know we got a lot of a lot of new viewers on the channel. Then we got the Thorn of Amherst, whatever the hell that call is it called? Titan, Titania's command. For the oh, I thought that was a mythic. It is not. But if you're newer to this channel, we speed run packs around here. That's kind of what we do. If you're looking for someone to break down all these cards and especially the commons and uncommons, if it's a good rare or a good card overall, we'll talk about it. But we are trying to speed run packs here, but not in this video. We're like at 18 minutes. One with a multiverse. I really love this one here. I don't know if I love it for eight mana, but you can look at the top card of your library anytime and then. You can play lands, cast spells from the top of your library, no big deal. And then once during each of your turns, you may cast a spell from your hand or the top of your library without paying its mana cost. Why would you want to run that? That is a terrible card. Then we got the Under Dark Rift from AFC Commander for our list pulls. So kind of a weak list pull right there. And I was being sarcastic about the one with the multiverse in case nobody uh, picked up on that. I guess I'm too deadpan sometimes. I'll say something in the comments. Or I'll say something in a video, sarcastic like that, and someone in the comments will be like, well, that's not the case. And I'm like, you you don't get the joke. Then we get Wellspring. Mechanized Warfare for the rare, and then... Oof. Mediocre box so far, guys, but let's see what ends up happening. Pristine Talesman. Swiftfoot Bootin'. Uh, Fortified Beachhead. I kept seeing this, thinking it was a uh, one of the pain lands, but it's not. It looks like it adds some mana, but then you can uh, pay five mana and tap it. Soldiers you control get plus one, plus one to end a turn. We'll still put it in the pain land pile. All right, what we got? What we got? All right, so seven packs with what's left here, and then we will get you guys out of here. So we get an Avenger, Lodestone Golem. Stasis Coffin. Would be nice to see another Mox Emerald or something. 
the brother other than homeboy right there our brother's list pulls have been weak brother's war uh pulls rather sorry have been weak all right and we got uh disciple of Celius there nin precursor golem blade coil serpent have not seen many of them i was gonna say that definitely has to be a mythic there looks like it does a bunch of crazy things we'll take a look at that more later another big one we can get portal to phyrexia i think we got one of them in the last opening but we would definitely like to see another one mistress bobo um mistress claimed by gix so gex gix whatever so we get two of the we get two of the uh tops of the puzzle here so very nice so actually we're probably two of the best pulls in the brothers war set and then a dark ritual from the list so maybe this isn't a complete disaster but we got four packs left, guys. We're like 20 minutes in. I know nobody's watching. What can I have someone type in the comments to prove their loyalty and that they're still watching? Let me think of something real quick. All right, how about this? Just type Gilded Lotus in the comments if you're still watching. Thank you very much. Gilded Lotus. Very nice. Then Mishra Tamara Makfawa. And that's it for that. All right, there's no way I did that. Is that gonna, yeah, it shows up on camera. Is that like a... I don't know what that is. Because I, I've damaged cards before, I'm not going to lie, and I've never damaged one like that, and that is just really weird. What does Wizards call them again? Minor Imperfections. I've been seeing that a lot lately this year in Magic. Lately and throughout this year. Like, what was it, Double Masters 2022 for as beautiful as those cards were? A lot of them... We saw, like, they weren't cut all the way. There was, like, all this white crap on the borders. Oh, there, finally, there's a flippin' uh, pain land. And a, uh, first time we're seeing that one in the border list. So, Battlefield Forge. I really like that artwork on that one. Then we get the automation. Fade from History. Two packs left. Now, does, does anyone run these? I got to quit. Outside of standard where you kind of have to. If you're looking for faster mana. I think some people will run them in Commander, but... I mean, the biggest thing is they don't come in the play tapped, so... Alright, two packs, guys. Alright, Self-Assembler. Burnished Heart. Then we get the Mind Breaker. The Might Stone and the Weak Stone. So, oh yeah, look at that. We can do it. Uh, I, that kills me when one's one's a foil and one's not, but there we go. So finally we got that. We'll take a look at that more later, what you have to do for that to kind of meld together or whatever the term is. I haven't even seen anyone do that on Arena yet a lot lately. Then we just got a Spirit Pirate from Commander Legends via the list. All right, guys, last pack. First box opening in a while. Hopefully it was somewhat entertaining. We definitely didn't get the best box. But again, sometimes you price these things out and you're like, yeah, this was a lot better than I thought. So we'll see how that goes. And what are these things? I, I, I got to figure that out. All right, then we got Elsewhere Flasks. Land of War Waste. So what is that? Four, four Pain Land. So that's probably the best we've done as far as that. Wow, and that was the last rare of that pack in that box. So thanks a lot, guys. We'll be back soon. And yeah, we'll be back.